Hi YouTube! I thought it would be fun to unbox this Jackson's Art haul. It's filled with Michael Harding watercolors. So here are the watercolors and I ordered, oh, I don't know how to pronounce this, it's yellow benzamidazolone, I'm probably saying this wrong. Yellow Lake Deep. Scarlet Lake Light. Pyro Crimson. The tools look a little bit like weird. There's something on it. I don't know what it is, but this is in the drone blue. I got something on my finger as well. Oh, I think something leaked. I hope not. Now there's something sticky on it. Cerulean blue. Cobalt teal. Conacodon gold. To say hematite. Burnt sienna. And Van Dyke Brown. So I don't know what the sticky residue is. But I'm like, I also have it now on my hands. So I'm going to clean that off. But I don't see anything leaking. So I think it's all good. So I'm going <laughs> to clean my hands and these tubes. And then we're going to fill some watercolor pants. So I removed the blue sticky stuff from the tubes, but I still don't know what this is. I don't think it's any watercolor because it's also on the blue tube, in the trunk blue. So that aside, I'm gonna, gonna put these watercolors in full pants and then we're gonna swatch them. So I'm just going to speed through this and fill these pans because it's going to take a while. <laughs>
So here are all of the watercolors poured into full pans. I noticed I noticed that some of the colors were like explosive. This seems to be very empty for a 15 ml tool, the Pousse Hematite. It also had like watercolor coming out of the tube already. And also this burnt sienna had like watercolor on the tube and it seemed to explode out of the watercolor tube. So I'm so I don't I'm not quite sure what happened to these watercolors. But I'm gonna let these dry and we're gonna test them out. So I've been trying out these Michael Harding watercolor paints and I added this color to the watercolor palette. So now I have 12 colors. I really like these paints, they are very pigmented. They remind me of M. Graham watercolors, like a mix between M. Graham and Daniel Smith. They do dry in the pan. I don't see, feel any stickiness anymore. So that's interesting. But the same goes for my M. Graham. Oh no, this one is still sticky. <laughs> so they contain a lot of honey, but not as much honey as the M. Graham watercolors. They are very pigmented, so I really had to practice how to use these watercolors. I also, it might be the colors that I picked. I picked like different colors than I normally would pick, but I still wanted a split primary. So I went with a neutral yellow, a warm yellow. I think this is a warm red, but it, I don't know, it doesn't lean that orange, but it's a lot warmer compared to the Pyro Crimson instead of a, like a Conecodon Rose. I also picked an Inertron Blue instead of the normal or regular Ultramarine Blue. And I also picked like a Cerulean Blue and a Cobalt Teal. Which means that I'm missing like a Taylor Blue or a Turquoise Blue. But it makes it a lot more fun to play with these colors. Um, let me check. Like this one was also done with the Michael Hardy watercolors. And in my watercolor sketchbook, I also played with watercolors, just seeing how or what skin colors I could. You see in here I tested even more. So, and you know, I'm not a professional painter. <laughs> Let me say that first, this is just a hobby of mine. <laughs> so I'm just keep, I'm trying to improve and keep improving my skills. But I was quite happy how this painting turned out. Especially with the aqua green and the pyro crimson in the background. I like the muted cool green look but let's watch these colors here are the colors that i have in the palette i accidentally switched the queen gold and the yellow lake deep around that i have laid out in the palette but it doesn't matter i have a, like a little bit more difficult time using these watercolors compared to like Schminke or Daniel Smith even. And that's because they're very pigmented and they also flow really nicely. But you see the pigment load? Like I just put in the brush inside the pen and didn't even pre-wet it, so. Next up, Scarlet Lake. I would more describe this as a neutral, warm leaning red. So I'm glad I put it next to the Pyro Crimson so we can compare. 
this is really beautiful for painting skin tones like it kind of reminds me of the it kind of reminds me of the Queen Coral in Daniel Smith but not as pink I used the Scarlet Lake Light as skin tone base for this watercolor painting and I quite like how it turned out next up the Cerulean Blue which has like a beautiful granulation I should really use this one in a painting it's like a nice soft color next up aqua green which is a very strong staining color and it leans very green because the pg7 is listed first and then the pb15 and i thought about picking the color that puts the pb15 first and then the pg7 so i would have like more of a turquoise color but i changed my mind and added this one so i thought why not the yellow lake deep Just a nice warm yellow. Let's zoom in. Next up, Burn Sienna, which leans a little bit more orange than I'm used to. It looks like the Quernacordone burnt orange from Daniel Smith. A little bit deeper, but that same like orange tone. I'm more used to the reddish tone. The Queen Gold uses the combination of PY115 and PR209. So this color has like a granulating pigment, which is the PR209. And I just didn't <laughs> look at it correctly because the website of Michael Harding puts down the granulating properties of every watercolor. So you can even select on granulating and non-granulating watercolors and the queen gold is listed on the granulating watercolors the persian blue too which i wanted to add first to the palette but then i was like no and i want another granulating blue <laughs> so let's watch the queen gold I picked this color instead of a yellow ochre type of color. Next up, the Pyro Crimson. I kind of love this color. I have no idea why, because it's like a cool tone, deep rose type of color. It's just beautiful. The Queen Rose would be more versatile in a palette. 
Next up, the Indutron Blue. I saw that the Michael Harding watercolors were on sale on a Dutch art supply store and they were better priced compared to buying on Jackson art supply store. Next up, Cobalt Seal. A beautiful granulating teal color. Next up the Pousset Hematite. That's what I expect a burnt sienna to look like. And last color is the Van Dyke Brown. It's a nice granulating deep brown color. This one is a little harder to re-wet. So here are the colors swatched out. What do you think of these colors? And I just really wanted to urge you to check or compare prices. I know it takes a while before watercolors get released to, to different countries. So watch or keep an eye for that. But if you like the M. Graham watercolors and Daniel Smith, you might like these watercolors as well. If you live like in a humid climate, you might not like them because they will stay sticky forever. Right now they just get hard in this pan because my apartment is pretty cold. <laughs> it's pretty cold in here. <laughs> I should put like a heater on but I don't feel like it. I'm gonna leave soon anyway so it doesn't even matter if this apartment gets warmed up right now. I drank a little bit of hot tea, so I'm fine. And it's not that cold. But these watercolors will stay pretty wet. This one is like a lot stickier. And I find the M. Grain watercolors harder to use compared to other watercolor brands because of the same reason I find these watercolors are a little bit harder to use because they are very pigmented. They have a high pigment load. They also have like a pretty nice flow, which I will... I need to look into what paper shows that off the best because this is just a sketchbook. It does really well for a sketchbook. And I bought these on sale. I bought the 14 by 14 for a little less than 15 euros. So 60 pages. I'm quite happy with the sketchbook. Because it just lets me do like the watercolor techniques I'm used to, like wet on wet, layering, softening out the edges. So I'm pretty happy about that. But the watercolor flow, I don't know. I might test that out. We'll see. I would recommend these watercolor paints to someone that likes the M. Graham watercolors and wants to have like very pigmented watercolors and doesn't live in a very humid climate because like I stored the Saint Lier watercolors like on its side and it leaked it's just like how 
now it's completely dry just i think it happened in the summer or something i hope you enjoyed this slightly rambly video thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next video bye <laughs>